Welcome to the Nicholas 11X5 technology. Today we're looking at the Sapphire Radeon R9 290X Battlefield 4 Edition 4GB GDDR5 AMD graphics card. This at the time of this video is AMD's flagship model. The reference design is used. Before I move on, I'd like to thank Derial, a true and supporting subscriber of mine, for providing me this product. Thanks for borrowing me this card and therefore making this review possible. Also thank you for giving me a copy of Battlefield 4 so I can use that game for benchmarking purposes in my reviews. Thank you. Here's the box. This is the Sapphire Radeon R9 290X card we're looking at today. The Battlefield 4 limited edition. So with the card you also get a free copy of Battlefield 4. This card comes with 4GB of GDDR5 video memory and has an amazing bus width of 512 bit. On the back of the box there's more information on the features. Inside the box right on top is the graphics card itself well protected in an anti-static bag. As for the accessories there's the Sapphire quick installation guide, this note here, as well as the Sapphire registration card. Of course there's also a driver CD included, but I'd really recommend downloading the latest drivers from AMD's website in order to get the best performance out of the card. These are the power adapters for older power supplies. A Molex to PCIe 6-pin adapter and a dual Molex to PCIe 8-pin adapter. Sapphire is also kind enough to include an HDMI cable. The Battlefield 4 card with the key isn't in the box. The Ryle sent me the key before I got the card so I could start testing with my GTX 780. Here it is now, the Sapphire R9 290X card. However, all that's different here with the Sapphire card are the stickers on the shroud. Because this is AMD's reference design card. At the time of this video, there are no other cards available yet with a better cooler. Speaking of the shroud, this is a plastic shroud. At first I was a bit skeptical, but now I really can't complain. You exactly know how much I dislike plastic shrouds on expensive graphics cards, but I'm happy with this one. This as always is a close design when it comes to AMD's reference coolers. I have to admit, cheap plastic was used for the shroud, but it's fairly thick and therefore quite durable. Something I don't like much are the stickers that Sapphire has put on, but I guess it's okay. A blower style fan is used that will blow the hot air out through the vents on the other side. To power this card up you'll require a PCIe 8 pin as well as a PCIe 6 pin power connector. The whole card is enclosed and also is quite heavy. A lot of aluminum is used here, but if that will help efficiently with cooling is a different question. AMD uses their lovely black PCB that most enthusiasts love so much, including myself. I'm not sure if you've noticed it yet or not, AMD no longer has crossfire fingers up there. They are not needed here anymore. You just install the cards into the PCI Express slot and run them in crossfire. You can run up to a 4-way crossfire configuration by the way. The R9 290X also comes with dual BIOS modes, quiet mode and Uber mode. At default it's set to quiet mode. BIOS position 1, so where the switch is closest to the outputs is quiet mode. BIOS position 2, so furthest away from the outputs is Uber mode. I'll be testing this card in both, quiet and Uber mode, so you can see what the difference is. This is a dual slot card by the way, and as for the outputs, there are two DVI outputs, one HDMI and one DisplayPort output. Up here are some ventilation holes that actually are very important when it comes to blower style fans, and this card uses one. When it comes to the looks, the aesthetics, I have to say, it looks very beautiful. You by now might already know I really like the reference design cards when it comes to the aesthetics. However, the cooling performance is always a lot worse and the noise levels are most of the time also higher. I know a lot of reviewers and consumers have complained about the shroud and how it looks like, but this time I'm defending a plastic shroud. This one is really beautiful actually. It's also a quite long card with 27 to 28 centimeters. On to the specifications. 
the Sapphire Radeon R9 290X offers 4GB of GDDR5 video memory, uses the new Hawaii XT GPU, has a core clock of 1000MHz and a memory clock of 1250MHz. The TDP is quite high with 300 watts, and the 28 nanometer architecture is used. DirectX 11.2, OpenGL 4.3, as well as the new Mantle API is supported. The R9 290X comes with a 512-bit bus width. In GPU-Z, you can once again see all the specs. At the time of this video, I'm of course using the latest drivers from AMD, which are still beta drivers. Overclocking is a possibility, but I'd not recommend doing so, because you'll see in the benchmarks that this card even at stock is running quite hot already. Things will look different if you go for an aftermarket cooler though. But now it's time to check out the benchmarks. So there you have it, as you saw yourself, the AMD R9 290X really performs. For you out there that might ask yourselves now, can this card play games at maxed out settings? Yes, this card can. And because 4GB of GDDR5 video memory is offered, it will also be good for higher resolutions than 1080p. Unfortunately I don't have the possibility yet to test at 1440p for example. The R9 290X at stock can be compared with the highly overclocked NVIDIA GTX 780 graphics card. And the overclocked GTX 780 card can indeed be compared with the GTX Titan graphics card. So once we see 290Xs with better coolers such as the DirectCU, WindForce and TwinFrozer coolers for example, we can certainly expect to see more performance. You could pretty much say, right now, the R9, 290X and the GTX 780 perform equally. Sometimes the R9, 290X is better and sometimes the GTX 780. The difference between quiet and Uber mode is minimal though. What I noticed in most cases when in Uber mode, you get higher minimum frame rates. This can indeed be helpful, but not really at 1080p, because the power consumption difference between quiet and Uber mode is pretty big actually. 58 watts in my case. That's not worth the extra minimum FPS when it comes to 1080p gaming. The power consumption overall is lower than the one of the GTX 780, but not by much. The temperatures both in quiet and Uber mode are 95 degrees Celsius on full load. When gaming I easily reached 89 to 92 degrees Celsius with it. I didn't experience any throttling and therefore the performance was stable. 
The R9 290X definitely is a loud card, but I expect it worse to be honest. It is louder than most other cards but not really that annoying. So overall, this Sapphire R9 290X graphics card is a pretty good card. The price performance ratio however is not great but also not bad at all. Nvidia lowered the prices on their GTX 780 to compete with the AMD R9 290X. But still, because this card can't be overclocked any further, has fairly high temperatures and is louder, I would for now recommend going for the GTX 780 if you're unsure whether to get this or the 780. Please keep in mind though, according to AMD, 95 degrees Celsius is no problem. Their GPU apparently is designed to run at 95 degrees without any problems. Pros are good price performance ratio, great performance and then I also like the beautiful shroud. Cons are high temperatures and the fan is noticeable and can get loud. Other than that, it's a great card and I give the Sapphire Radeon R9 290X 4GB GDDR5 graphics card a 7 out of 10 and would recommend it. Once again, thanks to the Ryle for providing me this graphics card and a copy of Battlefield 4. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit nicholas11x12techx.com to see videos there earlier than on YouTube.